Hi everyone, I'm Chrissy. In my previous episode, I explained to you in detail what kind of regulations and qualifications you need to meet to apply for house arrest. So in case you need to know more, just refer to my previous video. In this video, I will tell you from personal experience that when you go to the parole and probation office and you sign all the paperwork that they give you, you don't really know what you're signing for. You've been waiting so many years, days, nights to get there that as soon as this moment happens, it's a blackout. Half of it I don't even remember. So I could have probably signed my death penalty if they gave me one. Once you get there, they do make you sign a lot of paperwork and you're so anxious and you don't know what's going on. You're in a completely different environment. It's so overwhelming. So I'm here to help you today understand more about all the rules and the regulations and the qualifications that you need to sign off on once you get to the point to get transported to the parole and probation office to go home. What you need to know about this release agreement you sign the parole and probation, this is how it's called, conditional release agreement. This is how it looks like. It's a bunch of rules and regulations that we're going to go off on. Over here though at the top you need to see that there's different programs you qualify with. That basically means that, for example, I'm a DUI crime. DUI crime quali qualifies for 305 program. The 317 program, for example, is drug use, drug charges, things like that, that may get you approved for it. All of the rules and regulations are basically the same for all programs and we all need to follow them no matter what, because guess what, if we don't, they're, they're sending us back, no questions asked. So let's go a little bit by these regulations and explain to you what they're about. Once you get there, you will already know and you already have all the idea what you need to sign off on. One of the first rules is reporting. Once a month, you need to go and file a written report with the parole and probation. In order to do that, you actually need to go to the office. Basically, they ask you a bunch of different questions. Are you aware that the parole and probation do not have to notify you when they decide to come to your house and check on you? Do you have any felons visiting or living with you? The answer to that is always a no. Do you understand that they have the right to come at any given time and search the house? Not only check on you, but completely, thoroughly search it, which I'm still scared of. So far, it had it happened to me. I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to get away with it. The second thing is residence. Now this is very important even for before you get to the parole and probation so you know what kind of things you need to have ready and done there in order to have the house ready for them to be just approved and they don't have to deny you or make you wait longer. You're not allowed to change your address without prior approval. For example, my situation right now, I moved into this house because it was a safe geographic location and also they don't have, they have a complete access to me. Now I'm about to move and I'm about to go into a guard gated community so I had to ask for written permission from my parole officer which thank God he approved and now I'm ready to move. This is number one. You also have to have an appropriate phone equipment in the house. Basically, in 2020, cell phones is totally fine, but before that, they used to use phone lines. Now you're good with just a cell phone. Don't worry about that. For the equipment, though, like the GPS recording monitoring system, you need to have electricity already in the house in order for the company to get the signal and everything should be sent to them. So make sure that your electric is already connected and working. The third thing that you need to know is intoxicants. This is very important, especially for the wires because we also have barf device, also known as the breathalyzer. You cannot drink, purchase or have under your control any alcoholic beverages or any substance containing alcohol. That does include sanitizer and mouthwash, you guys. So make sure that there is nothing like this in the house in the first place. 
Also, you cannot enter any establishment or participate in any activities where the primary function is the use or sale of alcohol. So that means you're not allowed in any bars or liquor stores. And the GPS will record your um, location. Employment or programming. Keep in mind that you should be employed and work at least 30 hours per week. So if you have a part-time job, you have to make sure you get a second one, or you get into a program or school. All of that is good. It has to be, the employment place does have to be approved by the division first. And the requirements you need to be aware of that are that must be legal employment. Paid by check, not cash. You cannot have any cash payments. If they find out, that's a violation to the release agreement. Your, also, your employment does not allow you to travel outside of the community unless the parole and probation approves it. So, for, for example, if you want to be a truck driver, you have to first get a permission to travel state to state because this program usually does not allow you to leave the state. If you decide to change jobs, make sure you notify the parole and probation office and get the permission about the new employment. They have to approve that too. 30 hours every week, minimum, guys. Next thing is controlled substances. That's basically the same thing as the alcohol. It has followed the same rules and regulation. But you cannot possess any drugs or purchase them unless, of course, they're prescribed to you by a licensed doctor. And no, that does not include marijuana. Even though now it's legal in some states, you cannot, even though you have already the card and the permission and the doctor signed, you still cannot have any marijuana in your system. It is what it is. No drugs, you guys. They do have the right to drug test you at any given point just by stopping by the home. So when they come and say, hey, how are you? Hello, have a good day. Can you please go and have a drug test for me? At any given point, night or day. Mind you, they can come in the middle of the night. You wouldn't even know it. Weapons. As I mentioned in my previous video, you're absolutely not allowed to have any guns. Or possess them, carry them, have under your control. And this is not only for fire weapons though. Strangely, when I went and spoke to my parole officer for the first time and he went over these rules with me, he mentioned something real funny. He said, Make sure that your knives, your scissors are in their designated places. You cannot have scissors in your nightstand, for example. This is considered a weapon. They can definitely revoke you for that. All these nightstands, that's where your knives have to be. They cannot be in your bathroom for any reason. So make sure that you get that um, note in the back of your head and you know once you get there, all that is considered weapons. Associates. You shall not associate with any criminal record or anyone deemed as inappropriate by the division. They don't necessarily have to have a record. For example, gang member, they'll definitely be considered inappropriate. You cannot have contact with anybody that is locked up either, unless you actually have the written permission by your parole officer or the correctional facility institution you're being released from. Corporations. Just be nice to your parole officer. They're not that hard to deal with, to be honest with you. Notify him when you have to go some places, doctor's appointments, the grocery store. They're usually very prompt at answering you too. I speak to my parole officer only through text messages. I don't even talk to him very much. That also applies to where they might need any information from you. Who's coming to your house? When my husband comes out here, I have to notify him which day he's coming, which day he's leaving, how long he's going to stay here with me. That's about it. Now, laws and conduct. This is where you must comply with any institutional, municipal, county, state and federal laws. And if this is your second felony, or your crime requires it, you should go and register as a convicted felon. If you miss that, you might actually have problems with them again. 
out of state travel. That's about the same thing as the unemployment. You cannot leave the state for any reason, and if you do, guess what? You're now considered an escapee, which means not only you're violating your release agreement, but also as a, as a brand new felony charge. Escape, it's a completely new charge. It's giving you new time, new felony, and it's pretty harsh when you get one. It can get you anywhere between two and five years prison time. However, what's important is that once you get an escape charge, you go back in, that's all good and dandy, but you can never go back to a medium or minimum custody facilities like camps or halfway houses. You're never going to be allowed there again. If you need outside, outside of state travel, make sure again you notify your PO, you get the permission first, otherwise don't even, don't even do it. It's, it's not worth it. The escape charge, it's definitely not worth it. Driving. This is where I said a little bit earlier. The 305 program, I mean the DUI, I can never drive. I mean, while well, I'm on the house arrest program. You have to make sure that you have any, someone to drive you to the parole and probation office. Buses are fine, Uber, it's fine, uh, Lyft, it's fine. It applies specifically to the 305. The other inmates, I, I don't really, I'm not really aware of it, but I'm pretty sure that they're allowed to drive. I had a lot of um, inmates in the halfway house I was with that they actually had already jobs as a driver, so either pizza drivers, or Uber drivers, or that it's totally fine. 305, no driving. This is where I'm gonna speak about the supervision piece, and this is really important because I do get carried away and I forget sometimes, and I have to ask my parole officer, hey, did I pay for this month? But make sure that um, you keep it again in the back of your head and you know exactly what these supervision fees are. I did had mentioned briefly about this requirement in my previous video. Now you shall pay monthly fee to the division of parole and probation in the amount of $30. And it needs to be either a money order or a personal check. They don't take credit cards um, or debit cards for that matter. Just write them a check or send them a money order with this corona virus situation that we're in right now, I actually have to go and make the money order or write the check down, put it in an envelope, stamp it and send it to their office because right now we're not allowed to go for our monthly checkups. Second thing you need to be aware of and get paid is the Victims of Crime Fund. This is where you shall pay 5% of your monthly income to the Victims of Crime for Fund through the Department of Corrections, not through parole and probation. For every paycheck you get, 5% of that calculated, send it to the address that they're gonna give you for the Nevada Department of Corrections. Third thing you need to be aware of is your restitution of fees. I don't know how they work really. I, I didn't have to pay a restitution fees. All I know is that you need to be prompt on these also, otherwise that violates your conditional release agreement. And again, for something ridiculous like that, you don't wanna lose everything you worked for so hard. Search, this is one of our last steps. This is what I mentioned a little bit earlier too. The division has the right to search you your car, your place of residence, or property property under your control at any time of the day or night without a warrant. Not only the house, your car, anything that you might own or you've been into, make sure that it's all clean out of sanitizers and mouthwashes. <laughs> the last condition is special condition. That's how it's called. Basically, what it explains is that you must submit to a counseling through the parole and probation. It is a requirement. You cannot refuse it. You have to see an assigned counselor to you by the division every two weeks. Again, with the coronavirus, I speak to my counselor every two weeks on the phone, minimum of 30 minutes, 45 up to an hour sometimes it takes. But once this whole situation passes, you're gonna have to go down to the division and you're gonna have to meet with that counselor, counselor every two weeks. If you miss it, she has the right to make a report 
to the parole officer and again you're in trouble and you're not worth it so just speak to her or him it's 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 pretty uh, nice actually i have very good conversations and it's helping out with the whole transition situation that i'm in right now this is about all of the agreement that you, all the rules and the regulations you need to follow by signing this agreement you waive extradition to the state you're in from any other state and not only the states in the the states in the united states you um waive any extradition from any other country also so if you decide to escape in mexico they completely have the right to come there get you and put you back in prison I think that this is one of the most important things you need to know about this agreement because at the end of the day we spend so much time in prison waiting and waiting and waiting to get to their office and they just give you a bunch of paperwork, fill your head with a bunch of rules and you're so overwhelmed I blacked out, I don't even remember. So once I got home I actually got the chance to read this agreement and see what it's all about. This is it. I hope I helped a lot of you and make sure that you follow me, you subscribe for my channel and next week I will be talking about the activities that I'm actually allowed to do while I'm on house arrest. I had a person who asked me to speak a little bit more about this, which I'm really happy about. Thank you so much for your support guys. Subscribe for my channel and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.